Bacolid City, the capital of Negros Occidental in Western Visayas, is considered as a highly urbanized city. Based on the 2015 census, there are over 561,875 inhabitants who are residing in the progressing city. It seems to be obvious that Bacolod City has well improved through time in terms of infrastructures and business establishments. We can see that progress in Luxon Street, where three major fast food outlets of the country stand still. Of all these progress, there are the people who are left behind from the fast transition of living. These are the poor and marginalized people of the community. If you were able to take a drive through in the fast food chains in Luxon, you will see children picking through your car windows, selling flannels or often called as planilia in Hiligaynon. Have you ever wondered where they're from? Yasmin, along with her friend, who happens also to sell flannels, led me in their community, which is in Puruktangkong in Barangay 7. According to my own research, there are approximately 16 children who are selling flannels in 6th Street. <laughs> Okay, good. Mrs. Harder's small business helps them in providing for their basic daily needs. But in reality, it shows that it isn't enough for them that even the children have to compromise and work instead of enjoying childhood. All of the children live in small houses, and their dreams are big. In unison and subconsciously, they say they want to escape poverty. An inch of hope that's left is education, and that hope does not die down to these children. Vendor. 
Eric is currently in grade 8. He belongs in the best class of his year level. He's noticeably exceptional from his classmates. According to his teachers, he is currently part of their student government. Eric isn't the only vendor from his class. Along with him is James Gagliardo. Uh, Gagliardo is one of our boy scouts. <laughs> and of course, every scouting number, he also trying to be part of that um, organization. Mm -hmm. Para siguro ma-update man ang higa ng other side. Mm -hmm. And the other one is Storpo. Mm -hmm. At kung sa Storpo, if you are going to observe, mm -hmm. nag-get along siya sa mga friends niya. Mm -hmm. Kung hindi mo makita, it ang kaya na outer side when it comes sa ilang pangalit. Mm -hmm. Kung pagkat hindi mo makita sa personality. Mm -hmm. Nag-excel ang siya sa ginilang na quarter, third grading na. Hmm. Kay nag-ano siya mo, nag-amat-amat, nag-boost ang iyang confidence. Hmm. James's brother is currently a grade 12 student in the same school. Both of them are selling towels in 6th Street. Monday, Jim and James arrive in early. It's Monday. Jim and James arrived early in school for their flag ceremony. James's class led the ceremony. Uh, he was my student in grade seven. Tapos, uh, well, okay man na siya, buwak na siya. But there are times na na-notice lang kasi siya kay sa klase, tulog na siya. Mm -hmm. So, isang grade 10 ko na na-intindihan na nag-aano ah, sa grade 7. It's because nag-bullying isa, isa kay mama niya na pinamay ka rin diriyan. Kasi nang mm -hmm. sa aga, parang isa ka-bugtaw ka bulig. So, mm -hmm. yun. Tapos, Gabiyay sa tricycle kay para to augment sa miyab ng daily allowances kay the mother could not afford. For three years, the mother of JM and James, Jillieth Gallardo, have been enduring this exhausting routine by starting her day by 4 a.m. in the morning. By 5 a.m., the two boys wake up to help their mother cook and set up for the food cart which operates before they leave for school at 7 a.m. May ara siya na ma-income, uh -oh. maang mag-income, kaya balog ko para buwas. Uh -uh. Ang limo, dahil malari nito. Basi ko nang nakikita ko. Di si Bakbang niya. Uh -huh. Wala pag it's in my gilang. Uh -oh. okay, ano ano sila eh, nang nang ang ila pamisar niya. Ano, nang, nung future nila. Future nila. Mm -hmm. Kanami man o. Tapos nang sila atay, nag-agi kami sa kamilas niya. Mga mga baka. Mag, makaubra ko yung mga yan, mabakal, tagabala ito. Mm, uh -huh. Ay, ako ihipos na ako sa mga, damo ka pa yung asin gayo mga makain. Mm. Damo ko yan. Hindi 
lamang ay mo black so yan ang yan ang black so yung anak na tinugan na kayo black at wala kami balay ng amon sakto na kami mga artila artila ka mo dito ha? oo mga artila lang kami at yan ang naginasapay namin kada bulan kaya pili tubod lay pa lang kaya siyempre pangabuo naman ari mo ka namin lang the family of Mrs. Jillia is a living proof that there's still hope inside the community where walls are the only structures in between homes. Of all the circumstances and tests of life, striving hard is the only way to be free from the trap that keeps poverty from being passed from one generation to another. Okay, I am Robbie Ramos, the guidance counselor of the University of Sydney. Along with Dr. Robbie, we conducted a group dynamic in the community. It's an intimate sharing and group discussion where topic on child labor conditions are being discussed. All child work is uh, child labor. Huh. Because may ara man yung inipobra ang kabataan for the sake of huh. making them learn the value of working. But the moment na daw kaka-exploit na sila, mm. it means na child labor na na. Mm. And then, so, um, especially if they are made to work mm. and miss classes. So effects na psychologically, uh, well, may ara na sila tendency mm. to be hopeless, to get depressed. Mm. Eventually, wala lang na nila nakakonsider right now or nakarealize. Mm. Pero ara, ina, eventually, pagkuha in the future. A child's future brings countless possibilities. These children are children with dreams, but how can they actualize their own dreams when at an early age they are left with no choice but to work for their own education? We can never mitigate these social problems unless we become more empathetic. What's left in us is the power of choosing the right people who will serve our country, the Philippines.